So how to study SMART for an exam? Today I'm going to talk about the six essential steps that if you follow each one of these six steps, you're going to ace your exams by the end of it. And who doesn't want to ace their exams? So stay tuned guys because I'm going to bring you all the juice. Welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are new here, my name is Jill and I do videos on medical school. So stay tuned and check out my other videos if you are interested. And if you do like them, make sure you go like, comment and subscribe. And for those of you who are visiting my channel again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out any of my videos. Stay tuned guys. So today's video is how to study smart for exams. So I'm talking about my experience in med school and my experience throughout the years and this just does not apply only to med students so even if you're still in high school or you're not in medical school and you're doing some other degree this too does apply for you. So you can still watch this and you can still gain the same thing as us medical students. So stay tuned guys and let's move on. So as I said earlier there are six essential steps. So these are the six essential steps. So guys, number one is study environment. Number two is to plan out your day. Step number three is to pick the right resources for you. Step number four, you need to question yourself before you even start a topic. What do I really know? Step number five is active recall. And the last, step is spaced repetition. So these are the six important steps that I'm going to talk to you about today. So these are the six important steps that I'm going to talk to you about today. So let's talk about the first step guys. The first step is study environment. So make sure your study environment is optimum for you. Make sure you choose the study environment that you actually prefer. So some of you might like staying at home and studying in your own home. Some of you might like to go to the library and study. That might be where you study best. Some of you might even go um, to a cafe. So there are different kind of people and different kind of people do different, different things. So you need to find what you like the most, what you prefer and what you think is the most optimum condition for you to study. Make sure when you're about to start studying, make sure that there's no distractions. Make sure your dad is not sitting in the living room with the TV on and you can hear all the noise and everything that's going on or your mom cooking in the kitchen and yelling across the room at your sisters. Just make sure you're in a quiet room because you don't want any distractions. Also, something very hard for all of us to do is keep our phones away. So at least even if you're going to study for half an hour, Make sure you keep your phone away for that half an hour because that notification is going nowhere. I, and that's something I myself need to learn how to do as well. So our first step here is to pick the right study environment. So once we've done this, we can move on to the second step. So step number two, guys, is plan your day. So you guys, it's essential that you have a plan. You don't want to start off like, okay, I'm going to start doing maybe atrial fibrillation and then let's see how my day goes. No, plan your day and make sure when you do plan your day that you're making it as realistic as possible because nobody wants to have goals that are unrealistic. And by the end of the day, when you look back and you realize you haven't finished what you were supposed to do for that day and you're just not going to end up feeling like doing anything and you're just going to be just down, you know? So make sure you set realistic goals because that's important. You should be able to know how much you can achieve in one day and set that as a goal. Make sure you don't go over it because it's very disappointing when you're not able to uh, achieve what you've set. And especially if it's not realistic, then it's kind of a disappointment. So make sure you have a plan of what you want to know and by the end of it, see if you can achieve that goal. So that's step number two for you guys. 
So make sure you do that tomorrow. Step number three is to pick the right resources. So when you're about to study, how are you going to study? Are you going to study from your lecture notes? Are you going to study from your book? Are you going to study from something on the internet? Maybe a YouTube video or a website? So it's essential to know how you're going to study and what's the most effective way for you. I tend to stick to a very few resources and make sure they're reliable, of course, guys. And that will actually help because too many, it's like too many cooks spoil the soup. So that's just a personal opinion of mine. Make sure you've got the right resource. So ideally, um, I don't really use that many resources because so much information and one book says something else and the other book says something else because that just confuses the hell out of me. Um, no, I just want something that's given simple to me. So I recommend a website called Amboss. So I'll keep the link down below and I'll put the link here in the description and like everywhere you're going to be able to find this link. So Amboss I use is a very good uh, website for medical students and it's made specially for medical students where it has literally from what exactly, so say we're going thyroid. So what is thyroid? What is hypothyroidism? What is hypothyroidism? What causes each one of them? The clinical features, investigations, up to treatment. They even have x-rays, they even have videos. So make sure you guys go check out this uh, website if you guys are interested. And the other things I'd use is books. I'm not very much a fan of our lecture notes. So that's up to you guys. If you, if you think that your lecture notes are sufficient, then you, should, you guys should go ahead and use that. But some of the other books we use is the Oxford Handbook. So this is very good for clinical medicine. And the second one is Essential of Kumar and Clark's Clinical Medicine. They're pretty much alike. So either one would do. So you guys just need to know what you prefer to use. So that's step number three. And, one, and once you've done that, we're ready to start studying. So what is step number four? It's actually asking yourself, what do I really know about this topic? Uh, as I gave an example earlier, thyroid. What do I actually know about thyroid? Where is it in the body? What does it do? What, what's its function? Ask yourself, how much do I know about thyroid? So whatever topic you're going to talk about, whether it's got to do with any subject. So by the end of it, you'll have an idea of what you actually need to know and what you actually know. So that is important to be able to grasp where you are in your studies. And then you hit the books. And that's when step number five comes in. Step number five is active recall. Active recall, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard about it. Active recall is once you've learned something and you've gone through it, question yourself. So close your book and be like, okay, so what have I learned today? So thyroid, what exactly was thyroid? What, is, what are the features of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism? How would I treat them? What would I be looking for? What do you think could cause? Ask yourself what you learned and see if you can recall. And if you don't, it's okay. Go back and see what you missed out and you can learn them again. And in this way, when you do active recall, you're putting the puzzle together in your head. So you have a whole idea of what you've actually learned. So this is very essential. So guys, step number six. Last but not least, space repetition. So what do you guys know of space repetition? Space repetition is actually repeating what you've studied in different time spans. So we studied thyroid on Monday, which is hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, the carcinomas of thyroid. So then on Tuesday, you're gonna think that like, oh yeah, I still remember it. But then realistically guys, down the line, maybe in a week or so, you are going to forget this. And that's natural and everyone has this. But in order to solidify what you actually know, it's essential that we repeat what we've studied. So on Monday, you've studied thyroid. 
then maybe tomorrow you might just actively recall what you've studied again. So then you go back, you review it, and then you've understood it. And then maybe the weekend again, once you get to the weekend, review it again. So once you keep viewing it over and over again, it solidifies in your brain and you're more likely to retain this information. It's like hearing a phone number. So when someone gives you a phone number, you're not going to remember the whole thing once. You might actually memorize a technique to be able to remember the number. But then what happens is, say a week down the line, a month down the line, you are going to forget it. But what if it's your mom's number and you call them every single day? By the end of the week or by the end of the month, you are going to remember the number. So that's exactly how space repetition works. So guys, if you do like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Uh, and also make sure you comment with just literally anything. Just comment. Let's pass our exams. Let's graduate. Let's ace these exams. Whatever it is, make sure you just comment down below. And the next video I'm thinking of making is memorizing techniques. So I hope you guys find this tutorial useful. So guys, thank you guys for staying with me. And if you guys have been here all this time, thank you guys. You guys are the real deal. So thank you guys for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video. Peace out.